grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text for this Easter sunrise service is the gospel reading from John chapter 20. Please feel free to grab a Bible from the pew rack in front of you or turn to the reading in your bulletin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So it's, it's been a rough week. There have been so many different things that happened this week that have been difficult to deal with. Some of those have been personal things that not many people know about, and other things have made headlines throughout the world, and everyone who pays any attention knows all about them. Now, most of you know that our oldest daughter was hospitalized earlier this week and had to have surgery. She's doing great, but Sunday and Monday of last week were some of the longest days for Rachel and me in recent memory. This past Wednesday, and, and then again uh, uh, later on in the week, there was a fatal car accident over on the water set. A woman was driving down the highway, and she was rear-ended by a garbage truck and, and pushed into a beer truck, and unfortunately that woman ended up losing her life in that accident. And everyone has seen and heard about that devastating fire at the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris. The roof collapsed, and the iconic spire with a cross on top of it fell through the building live on television. It was a terrible fire, and it affected so many people throughout the entire world. And all those things are just a snapshot of all the terrible things that happen in our world on a daily basis. There are many things that happen in our world that make you just shake your head in disbelief and, and even shed a tear or two wondering what is going on in the world. It's easy to look at all the bad stuff that happens in our world and wonder where God is in all of it. It's easy to think that God has abandoned us and left us to fend for ourselves. When you survey all the awfulness in this world, it's easy to start to think that God is nowhere to be found and that he's been taken away from us. And that's exactly what Mary Magdalene thought when she went to the tomb of Jesus early on that first Easter morning. Just before our reading in John chapter 20, right at the end of John chapter 19, we have the description of the burial of Jesus. Joseph of Arimathea was allowed to take Jesus' body from the cross, and, and he and Nicodemus wrapped it up with the burial spices they'd prepared according to Jewish custom. They laid Jesus in a brand new tomb that had never before been used, but they had to leave him because it was the day of preparation and they were not allowed to do any work. And we know from the other Gospels that a stone was rolled in front of the entrance of the tomb and that there were Roman guards stationed in front of the tomb so that no one would be allowed to enter it. And that's where we left on Friday evening. Jesus is buried and it appears that the worst thing ever has happened. So early Sunday morning, as soon as she was allowed to do so, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. She was going to prepare Jesus' body for a proper burial since they hadn't been able to do so on Friday. But she arrived and found that something even worse appeared to have happened. Not only was her teacher dead, but now it seemed as though his body had been stolen as well. The cut that was already so deep in her heart from Jesus' death was now worsened by what she thought was a heinous act of grave rob robbery. Things just kept getting worse and worse. They seemed to be as bad as they could possibly be. It seemed as though God had completely abandoned them. This man who they thought was going to be their king, their earthly ruler, their savior, had been murdered and now his body had been stolen as well. And Mary went and told Peter and John that Jesus' body was missing, and they ran to the tomb. John got there first, but Peter went in first. And they also saw that Jesus' body was no longer there. He'd been killed, and his body had been taken away, perhaps never to be found again. The pain was too great for Peter and John. They went home to continue mourning the loss of their teacher. But Mary stayed, and she looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels sitting there inside where Jesus' body had been laid, and they asked her a question with, with the most obvious answer in the entire world. They asked Mary why she was weeping. I mean, that's one of those moments that you kind of say, why would, why would you even ask that question? It's, it's pretty obvious. Her world has just come crashing down around her. Her teacher has been killed, and his body is now missing. I mean, don't you think she has every right to be upset? And then Jesus shows up, but Mary doesn't know it's him yet. Some think, some think that she was crying so hard that she couldn't see well. Others think that she just wasn't expecting to see him, so she didn't really realize it was him. Whatever the reason, she didn't recognize Jesus standing right in front of her. 
And then he asked her the same question as the angels. Why are you weeping? And Mary thinks that he might be the gardener. She's hoping that maybe it was just a mistake that his body was moved from the tomb. Maybe this guy knows what happened to it. And then Jesus says her name. Mary. And she recognizes him. She cries out, teacher. Jesus is alive. He's standing there right in front of her. He isn't in the tomb because people who are alive, they don't hang out in tombs. Jesus came right to Mary when she was at her lowest point, when her world had come crashing down around her, when all these horrible things that had happened over the past three days, when she thought that even the body of Jesus had been stolen and she wouldn't even be able to mourn properly. Jesus came right to her, looked her in the eyes, and called out her name. And my friends, that's exactly what Jesus does to you as well. When your world seems like it's falling apart around you, when terrible things happen in your life, when it seems as though there's no light at the end of the tunnel, Jesus comes to you, he looks you in the eye, and he calls you by name, and he tells you that you have nothing to fear. Even though sometimes it may seem like God has abandoned you, even though sometimes it may seem like you don't know where Jesus is, even though sometimes it may seem like there's no hope at all, we know that we always have our hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and nothing can take that away from us. My friends, as we peer into the empty tomb this morning and realize that Jesus is alive, as we remember that through his death he has earned our forgiveness and taken away the stain and the guilt of our sins, as Jesus comes right to us and calls us by name, we're also called to go and share that awesome message with others. The last verse of our reading today is Mary going to the disciples and telling them that she has seen Jesus and that he has told her what she's supposed to tell them. She's supposed to share the news of his resurrection, the news that Jesus is no longer dead, but he has been raised and is alive. My friends, that's the same amazing news that we get to go and share today and every day as well. The news that Jesus is alive, the news that Jesus has won the victory for us, the news that we are forgiven and redeemed because Jesus died for us and because he rose again from the dead. And we can share that news with joy. We can share that news even when bad things happen, especially when bad things happen. We don't have to question where God is because he's right here with us loving us and forgiving us because of the work of Jesus for us. My friends, Jesus is risen, and because of that, no matter what happens in this life, we have nothing to fear because he promises that we will live again with him in perfection forever. So go now. Go and share this amazing news with everyone. Go and tell them that Jesus is alive and we are forgiven. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all of our human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Please stand.